Hello there, and welcome back to my workshop. We're starting a new project, and the new project is going to be a chest of drawers to serve as a base for my tool chest. I have it sitting right here on top of two Japanese toolboxes right now, but I want to make a, a small chest of drawers about uh, 25 inches wide, 25 inches high, and with some drawers in it for storage. I've got a, a quick sketch here that I can show you. I showed this to you last time. You can see it here. It's as high as it is wide. It has three rows of drawers. Three, row, three drawers on top, two in the middle, and then a larger one on the bottom. Here's another sketch I did. And this shows the tool chest in place. Sorry, that's the best graphic I have. I really need to get with the 90s and start doing better computer generated graphics, but uh, that should serve its purpose anyway. Um, let's see here. Um, we got started, and uh, let me show you this. This is the side. We're going to be making another one today. And you can see that it's a sort of frame and panel construction, actually two panels. But the difference here is that my vertical styles are not here. I'm actually going to use my legs as styles, and they contain the grooves that will house my panels. So uh, you can do it either way. I've seen sides made where it's frame and panel all the way around, but I thought I'd incorporate the legs in the design. Um, and I kind of, I drew them out both ways and I kind of like this way. So um, that's that. And then on the back, you can see here, the drawer dividers are gonna be joined to the legs with twin tenons. That's pretty typical. And you can see here, I drilled out the waist on the mortises with my drill press, just to save me a lot of time and trouble. And over here, I've squared them up. So they're ready to go. So that's that. Let me show you the, uh, the actual construction. It's very basic. Um, let's see here. I'll pull this apart for you, if I can. Here we go, there's one leg. This leg here, I think, is going to fight me. There we go there. And then the, uh, let's call this the center style. That's mortised into the, the rails, top and bottom. And here you can see the mortises, the grooves, there's a haunched tenon on the top and a regular tenon on the bottom. So that's what we have to do. Uh, let's see here. Maybe I should uh, show you the parts I have set aside for this. Have these already cut to length. Uh, let's talk a little bit about cabinet makers marks or triangles. There's a number of ways to mark your materials, but it's very important that you do. Now this triangle here tells me that this end is up, that this is the face out, and we've got these two facing each other this way. Also on the rails, you see the rails here, this is the lower rail, this is the upper rail. And what I did was I put this triangle on the right hand side and that just tells me that this is the right side of my cabinet. So there's a lot that I can learn just by looking at that one triangle. A lot of different ways to mark your, your parts. Some people use blue tape, some people use colored pencils, there's kind, all kinds of ways to do it, but uh, this works for me. So I think uh, what we're going to do now, let's look at this real quick. Um, this groove has been done. This mortise and this mortise need to be squared. And then I need to plow that groove. How are we doing okay? Mm -hmm. Chisel. this in two passes.
like to do, I've got a little quarter inch stick here marked with the depth of my mortise and I can use that to make sure I've got my mortise deep enough and also if there's any spots that need some work I can uh, fix them and locate them with this, this stick. So um, we'll finish that with that later but let's move on to the next one. Okay, I took a few minutes and uh, cleaned these mortises up, so we're set there, but now we have to plow this groove, and that's a bit of a challenge, and I'll show you why. It's a stopped groove. I'm starting here, and then I'm going to plow out this way. So uh, I begin here and end there. I don't go the entire length of the board, and that's going to be a problem with my plow plane, because the skate rides along the bottom of the groove as I'm cutting it. The cutter protrudes out the bottom of the skate here, or my iron pr protrudes out. And if I'm starting here and proceeding this way, after a few passes, my skate will prevent my cutter from touching the wood. So that's not going to work. I would have to chop out this whole section here to give room for my skate to fit. So that will not work. But then I remembered that my router plane will work, and I'll show you why. The way that's configured, there's very little, there's no skate at all, and it sets right down into the mortise here, and then I can push it along that way, and it'll work just fine. But how do I do it straight? How do I keep it from going like this along the way? I need a fence. Well. When I first got this, I went and bought a fence, and I've never used it. I've had it all this time, and here it is. It's been sitting in a box, but watch this. Very simple. You just screw this fence on, like that. How long did that take me? And now I have a fence to control my blade as I go along and I can make a nice straight groove and I can very easily adjust it here much easier than my plow plane and I can see exactly where that blade is because I can see right down into it as it contacts the wood very easy to set so what we're going to do now is plow that groove Got everything ready here. And check this out. This is a uh, this is a batten, and I saw a guy named Rich McGuire use this. And this is an excellent way of holding work on your bench top. It's got a angle in it and you press it up against your board like so and there you go easy as anything Richard McGuire is his name his website is the English woodworker.com check it out it's one of my favorite websites so uh, thank you Richard and here we go doing all right there mm -hmm. okay now I'm right on the edge there. I'm going to advance this a little bit. Now I do have to advance the the cutter each pass, but um, yeah, that 
goes good there. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to clamp it a little bit more here just to give me a little extra clamping. These little curly cues. Okay, my depth stop was set correctly, so it stopped me from going any further. This will be the last pass. That was the last pass. Okay. All right. So, there's our groove, and there's our two mortises. And now, the next step is going to be working on our rails. All right, I've got my two rail boards here and I've marked them ahead of time. Use a square to mark my shoulder and I use my wheel gauge to mark the cheeks. And now we're going to make the cheek cuts first. Okay, we got our cheeks cut, and the next step is going to be uh, doing these mortises for our center style. We need to chop them out, and then we do the grooves. That's the order.
And now because it's a it's not a stopped groove, I can use my router plane. And uh, just to uh, eliminate or reduce the chance of any little tear out, I'm going to score the groove line with my wheel gauge on the, uh, the part you'll see. So uh, here we go. Okay, I've got my rails here, I've got my tenons sawn, got our groove and our mortise, and now what we need to do is fine-tune our tenons. And the best tool for that is my router plane. Let's get these clamped in place. And the router plane is going to assure that my tenon faces are nice and parallel and straight down the middle of my board. So let's get started there. Now you've seen me do this before in the saw bench show, but uh, I thought I'd show it to you again, just so you get the idea. All right, we've uh, fine-tuned the fit of our tenons and we're ready to assemble. I think by now you realize how important it is to have your parts well marked. It's very easy to plow a groove in the wrong edge or chop a mortise in the wrong spot. So those cabinet makers triangles are very, very important. Also, I like to make full-scale drawings of everything that I'm making and then refer to those drawings as I work. Now, I don't have a lot of wall space in here, so what I do is I actually put the plan right on the floor. Here it is. Detailed full-scale drawing with the joinery shown here 
and I can actually lay a piece right on my drawing and check it that way. It really does help avoid the uh, wailing and gnashing of teeth that can take place in the workshop. So uh, let's fit this together and see how it looks. There we go. Hey, it looks pretty good. And I'll make our uh, center style for next time. And uh, next time also we're going to do the panels and we're going to taper the legs and then we're going to glue up these leg units. Uh, and I'm hoping that my uh, glue up will go better than the last one. Let's hope so anyway. So uh, I think that's it for this time. We got a lot done. Thanks for stopping by and see you next time. Wasn't that great?